Hello, and welcome to this episode of Round Robin. I'm Robin McCormick, the City of Hampton spokeswoman, and I have with me a guest today that many of you will know and have seen before, but it's going to be a little bit of a different setting. Nathaniel Adibi, a former football player for Phoebus High School and Virginia Tech, and the Steelers and the Seattle Seahawks is here. And actually, if you notice, he's not wearing a football uniform. He's wearing a uniform of a very different sort. And with him is Sergeant Christine Wright. She's a recruiter for the Hampton Police Department. And we're going to talk today about what a career in the police department is like and what the recruiting and hiring process is like. And the reason we're doing that, Nathaniel, you're our example, is you just finished the police academy. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. I have. What? How did you make the, I mean, it's a very different career. Obviously, they're both physical careers, and you have to be in good shape to be a football player and to be a police officer. But it's very much a change of the career direction. What prompted you to consider becoming a police officer? Well, mainly, I'm from the area. I consider Hampton to be my home. It will always be my home. And once I finished my football career, I kind of thought about what to do next. And um, <clears throat> I remember my next door neighbor being an officer, and he tried to recruit me out of high school. Oh, really? Yes. So um, that kind of stuck in the back of my head, and I decided it's a great opportunity, so why not? And so I went to go knock on his door. He took me to see a recruiter, and it's been great ever since. It takes a certain, I mean, a very special person to, to become an officer. It's not a nine to five job. It's not a desk job. It's not something that is particularly safe or easy. Was, was it a hard decision for you at all? No, man, I wouldn't say so, because honestly, football is not safe and easy. So That's for sure. <laughs> and you were injured in football, too. So Yes, ma'am. So it's, it's kind of the same kind of process, um, accountability. Um, it's just about having fun and doing something different. And I wanted to always love to help people, and it's a great way to help people. It is. It is definitely a great way to help people. Well, applying to be a police officer is very different than um, applying for anything else. I mean, in the city of Hampton, I put on an online application, and they checked my references and called me in for an interview. And I'm going to guess that's not quite the process you go through. It's a little bit more extensive this time. Um, the, the way to start with the Hampton Police Division is to go to the City of Hampton Human Resources website and click on the hire link. And then you would choose the position you're looking for. And you can actually fill out an online application through the hire link. OK, so it starts the same way as any other city job. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then the applicant would sign up for an assembly, which is the first step of our hiring process. Um, the police assembly is an informative uh, about a couple of hours worth of information that tells the applicants what our process entails and what our benefits are. Uh, we try to give a lot of information so that they know the benefits of working with us and also some of the things that some might consider um, bad things, that they like the physical Challenges. part of it. Challenges. Right. Right. Um, we also try to give them information if they want to compare to other agencies and things. Um, so that they know in a lot of ways um, Hampton really is a higher standard, um, especially the Hampton Police Division. And we want people to understand that when you come to Hampton, you know you're going to be working alongside good people with high standards. And that's really what we try to impress. Okay. So you go to the assembly, and that's mostly informational. And that didn't scare you, right? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> so what happens next? Um, at the assembly, the applicants will, will take a post-test. It's a police officer's standardized test where they get um, tested on their reading, their math, and their comprehension skills. And then as long as they pass the test, then they are allowed to do a personal interview where we talk about um, the a recruiter sits down with each applicant and discusses um, everything in their background because they're going to bring with them a background questionnaire. And that um, is kind of the basis for the background investigation when it gets to that point. So they talk about a variety of things to include um, employment history, military his history if they have it, education. And they also get into some, um, some conversation about things that are considered disqualifiers, like um, drug, some drug usage, uh, criminal history, certain financial issues that may come up. So we try to, we as a recruiter try to learn what the applicant has to offer and also what, what roadblocks we may come into as we work with them. And also we want to make sure that the applicant knows what we'll take and you know, what we will and will not accept 
so that they don't waste their time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was not a roadblock for you. You were, you were pretty comfortable there. What's the next step? The next step is the physical ability test where they come out in their PT gear and um, do a variety of physical skills that we need them to demonstrate for us. Um, if they pass that, they move on to an oral interview panel, which is um, the applicant interviewing with five other division members and they um, go over a series of questions and they get ranked and then from there they go into a background interview, um, a polygraph test, they do psychological and medical physicals. Now that's a lot more than people have to go through to get <laughs> hired, you know, for my job, for example. Right. First of all, the physical test, you had some injuries from your football yes, career. Were you able to come back from those? I mean, you're, you're able to meet the physical requirements, obviously. Yes, ma'am. Actually, my brother got drafted by the Texans. I kind of went down to stay with him just to get a chance just to recruit, recover from my injuries. Um, oh, so that that's... kind of, that helped me out a lot. He, it was a blessed. It was and a you should go ahead me. and say your brother's name, because I'm sure uh, he's pretty well known here yes, in Hampton. Yes, Xavier Deby. Mm -hmm. helped me out and a lot. he's now with? He signed, but he finished the season up this past season with the Vikings. Okay. All right, so you went and, and participated in some of his training to get to get back yes, into condition. Okay, now this interview panel, is that at all scary? Now that was scary. Now this one, Really? <laughs> it kind of reminded me a lot of <clears throat> going through the football process of talking to the, the head coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been talking to a lot of high-ranking people in the police rank, in the police division, and I was kind of nervous to make sure I was proper and spoke elegant and just Try not to be nervous. You know, I, I hate speaking in public, honestly, but it's, so it's kind of different for me. Do you? Because you're very comfortable with it. I mean, you're, you're more comfortable in front of the camera right now, I think, than I am. <laughs> and um, obviously, you you speak with a lot of people and a lot of media in, in your football career, even in high school. So you're you're probably more it's, look it's still more kind of, comfortable it's still kind of than different, you feel. You know, it's being in front of <clears throat> being informal is different than being formal. That was mm -hmm. more of a formal setting, which is kind of nervous for me. Being very informal, I'm, I'm very relaxed. There's no issue there. Mm -hmm. So okay. newspaper and TV, not a big issue. They're not making or breaking your career, frankly. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it, it's just a little less pressure. Okay. And the polygraph test, what's that like? It's all about honesty, you know. Doing the background. When you first talk to them, they, when you give them all your information, all, it's all about being honest. You know, if you're not honest, they can't, they can't deal with you. Because being in the, in the court system is all about honesty. Mm -hmm. So that's all they're trying to see if, is how honest you are. How honest you are and being accountable for what you've done in the past and telling them about it. Okay, so that worked out for you, just to be honest. Oh yes ma'am, no, no issue, that I, I, I don't have nothing in my background to hide. Uh -huh. Of course, nobody is perfect. Now just let them know what you've done and I promise you'll be just fine. That's great. So then what happens? Um, when, as long as the applicant passes the polygraph test, then we continue with the background. We contact um, neighbors, we contact past employers people who know them, and we just try to make sure that they have a good moral character and reputation within the community that they're from. And uh, as long as that goes well, then they move on to the um, psychological testing and also the medical physical. All right, so the psychological testing, what is that like? From first person, how did that <laughs> you know, feel? Long. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like about 400 questions. It seems like it's the same kind of questions over and over again. I mean, this, I guess it's just trying to see, make sure you're not crazy mm -hmm. in, a, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's, how it's done. I just know I made it, so <laughs> I'm not crazy. Okay, well that's good, good to hear. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then they get accepted? Uh, yes, as long as they pass the medical physical, they, they have a final interview with um, uh, the chief and sometimes a major, and then obviously uh, the chief makes the final decision if someone gets hired. Wow. Okay. It's, it's a rather lengthy So how process. long does that take? It takes, um, it can take up to six months, sometimes a little bit longer, but probably four, four to six months would be the average. Okay. And, and the reason you're here today is because you're recruiting right now. You yes, have a police academy class to fill, is that yes, right? Yes, ma'am. And what's the timetable on that? We are looking to hire, the next academy is going to start in July. So we try to bring the people on um, usually around late June. And uh, we are currently posting for the police position and the police recruit position. So we're hiring, um, if, if somebody is already certified as a police officer in Virginia, we'll hire them. But if they are not certified, we hire them as a recruit and we send them to the academy so they'll get all their training. It's paid 
on the job training and when they're finished they go into the field training process after that they're completely certified in Virginia okay so Nathaniel when did you start the Academy I started Academy in July Yes. And what is that like? I mean, my view of police a lot of times comes from TV, so it's probably not terribly <laughs> accurate, and I apologize for that, but it's... It's, it's a lot of learning. Um, you have to deal with a lot of law. I didn't realize how much things police have to learn. Mm -hmm. I did not realize the laws that they really truly have to know about. It was fun. It was exciting. I love the driving portion of it, driving police cars through, the, through all the different obstacles. I assume they have a special driving course so you learn to drive fast or handle the cars and exactly. all that sort of stuff. And it was, that was by far the funnest thing we've done mm -hmm. throughout the whole academy. And the shooting, you know, you have to be not necessarily marksmen, but at least know how to handle a gun. And Did you have any experience with a gun before this? <laughs> a little bit. I have a friend that took me to the gun range every now and then. So mm -hmm. I, had little, I had a little bit of experience with it. But it was fun learning firsthand the ins and outs about the gun. And now you're pretty comfortable. I mean, I see you're obviously in uniform today, so you've got your gun with you. It's all just part it's, of what yes, you do. Yeah, it's, it's second nature now. And I, I love to shoot now. It's fun. It's exciting. So they, and they actually teach you not just how to do it, but enough that it is comfortable, that it becomes your sort of second nature to, to drive in a certain way and to carry a gun. What was the hardest thing about the Academy for you? The hardest thing, honestly, the worst part of the thing about the Academy for me was the, the OC spray. Um, what that is was, that? The, the pepper spray. The, oh, the pepper everybody spray. who carries it has to have it used on them once. Yeah, is that, that right? Top Ooh. five worst days of my life. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. That can't be but, fun. But I definitely, you know, once you get sprayed, you just have to do it like a little course to fight through it, to let you know that you can fight through it. And mm -hmm. I think that my football career and just, just fighting through injuries and different things to help me get through that. Staying phase. sharp when you're in pain and, yes, and keeping exactly. your focus. That, that probably did give you a little boost. But other people learn to do it too. Obviously, yeah. it's something you have to get through. Everybody goes through it. <laughs> what, was, um, what was fun about the Academy? Just <clears throat> being around other, other recruits, you know, getting to learn them, um, being around different personalities. It just you know, outside officers coming in and talking to you about their experiences. And I think that was a, just a great learning experience and tool to help us become better officers for the future. So they talked about, what kinds of things did they talk about? Just their experience as well. You know, how everybody's always nervous once they start mm -hmm. and they don't know what to expect. Yeah. <clears throat> you'll, you'll grow into being a good police officer. As long as you're willing to learn and keep your mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> and learn from the other, <clears throat> the other veterans on the, on the force, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll do just fine. So you graduated then, and when was that? I graduated in December. Okay, so just a little bit ago. And then what happens once he's out of the academy? The, the academy, yeah, the academy is um, 21 weeks long, and it is taught completely by Hampton or organized by Hampton. We actually just, uh, within the past couple of years, have been able to do our, our very own police academy versus the regional academy. Oh. So that's kind of nice. We just um, moved into the new building out at Fort Monroe. So the academy is out at Fort Monroe now, and they do, um, they do like he said, a week of driving. Yes. They do at least a week of defensive tactics. They do um, about two weeks of firearms training in one block, and then every week we try to bring them in at least once a week before that block, and we try to continue through it so that they are comfortable right. with it and they, they don't just get two weeks and then nothing else. They're constantly getting it throughout the academy. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously there's a couple of weeks of legal training and that's probably the most boring part of the academy. The classroom, the it's, legal. It's, it's boring, but it's definitely informative. It's like you're so, so much information coming at you. It's like it's hard to, to remember everything, but you just constantly go over it. It's, it's pounding it into you. It's literally pounding it into you. And we, we do get a lot of our officers teach almost 100% of the academy. So it's nice that we our officers come in and give them their experiences and, and can really relate stories to this is why you need to learn this because mm -hmm. you will have this on the road. And then, yeah, when they're done, they have a nice graduation ceremony and then they start a 10-week a field training course. Right. So are you still in the field training or I are you finished? You're about finished now, right? Yes, I officially finished the, um, yesterday, yesterday morning. So what is the field training like? Do you ride with an experienced officer? I mean, how, yes, how does Yes, man, you that ride go? with an experienced officer. You are, you are a unit, a two-man unit for the most part. And um, you go to these calls now and then you're literally out in the field working. 
and you, they try to get you to gradually get your way into feeling comfortable to doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. So what was the first arrest or the first thing that happened when you were when you were doing the training? My first night, literally right when we first hit the road, we got a domestic call. And um, it was amazing to see like, wow, people actually go through this stuff on a daily basis. So a domestic call, it was like a robbery, I think it was, after, right after that. So it was just constant, the whole night, it was, just, it was just constant, just ongoing. It was exciting, but yet scary. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm lucky that I had somebody next to me the whole time because I was kind of nervous the whole time. I bet, <laughs> I bet. And I have heard, I don't know, I don't have any statistics or know exactly where I've heard this, but the domestic calls are particularly tricky because of the emotionalism of some of those incidents that that, that can be um, a difficult, difficult task for a Definitely. police officer. But you feel like you, you had an experienced officer with you and you were, you were ready to handle it and ready to help in right. that situation. At least I think I was ready to help. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what has been the, the most difficult thing so far that you've faced? Well, I won't say nothing's been too difficult. Just really, I'm from the city, but yet I've, it's hard to get around, not knowing some of the areas I've never been, been, been before. Mm -hmm. um, so just trying to get there and get there in a, in a timely manner. Hampton is a weird little city yeah, is, and that exactly. there's uh, some like 261 miles of shoreline. And so mm -hmm. to get from point A to point B, you generally have to go around a river or a creek or a lake or something else mm -hmm. to get somewhere, I it know. Is, it's definitely a lot different than I thought it was. You grew up in Phoebus? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're familiar with parts of the city, but, but no, not everything. Exactly. Okay. What, um, what has been the most exciting thing that you've faced so far? Again, again I think it's being on the road, for, you know, for, just being out there in the field, and each call is is different. I may go to five domestic calls, but each five is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And so, it's just about learning. It's all about learning. What would you say to somebody um, who is thinking, maybe I could do this, maybe I could be a police officer, but I'm really not sure? I would say just just in and go through the process. You know, talk to people, and they're, the officers here are great. They're very informative. They'll be willing to help you and talk to you about their experience, and. Instead of complaining all the time, do something about it. You know, go in there and try. You're from the city. You're from this area. So go out, help out, and see see what it comes. You never know. You never know what it can do for you. Mm -hmm. Our recruiters are very informative, and they do every. Obviously, when we work with the applicants, we want to hire people that will stay with us and that we know will be able to get through all of the training that they're going to go through. So we we make it a point, and we pride ourselves in preparing the applicants from the very beginning of this is what you're going to expect, this is what you'll have to go through, you will have to work shift hours, um, your shifts may rotate, there, there's a variety of things. Um, obviously a person's family is going to get um, involved and they have to have that support if they have a family um, because without the family support it does make it very difficult and we want to make sure that people understand that there also comes a point in time when we speak with the families, we invite um, spouses to the initial assembly if they want to come and listen so that they learn and can ask questions right along with the officer. Um, we want to make sure that they have the right mental um, mindset when they get hired and we continue with that throughout the process. We, we work very hard to have teamwork, we work very hard to support each other and have that family base so that everybody feels comfortable leaning on each other when the time comes. Okay. So, um, if can you give somebody, I mean, say something to the folks out there about why they might want to do it. I mean, to become an officer, face all those challenges. Well, again, this is, <clears throat> it's a very exciting career. It's never boring. It's never the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like this person sit behind a, a desk or right. in front of a computer all day. And you, you're literally out there on the road, like, you're getting a chance to talk to people, to meet a lot of people. And again, it's a great way to truly, truly help people in their situations. You know, if you like doing that kind of things, this might be a spot for you. And I think you should at least get, owe that to yourself just to look into it and apply for it. So you want people to start um, and, and make it through there. And part of the reason for that is so you're sure they're going to work out, yes, they're right. sure they're going to work out and that they know what they're getting into, but also you're making quite an investment. I mean, if, if, if the city is paying for people to go through the training, then they want to make sure that you're as ready as you can be and that hopefully you're going to stick around. Yes, ma'am. Is that your game plan, Nathaniel? Of course, yes, ma'am. Like I said, I'm from the area, so I want to be here. 
That's great. Well, it's great to have you as an officer in the city of Hampton, and it's great to have you here today. I appreciate both of you coming by and Thank giving you. us really an inside look at what it means to be a police officer and how that hiring and training process works. Thank you all for uh, watching today's episode of Round Robin, and we'll be back again later. Thank you. Thank you.